Uh, which was built by burying the village of West End between Otley and Pateley Bridge. Building commenced in 1961. And I had the dubious task of bringing from Leeds Labour Exchange the very first load of workmen to the stone house in and down the West End Village Road to start building this reservoir in, I think, March or April 1961, 34 and a half years ago. There have been quite a few mild summers and mild, uh, uh, sorry, lovely summers and mild winters ablaze, resulting in water shortages of varying degrees. But this year, 1995, as they say, takes the biscuit. The position with the water is now critical, and virtually the whole of West End Village is now exposed again after 30 plus years of being underwater. This is an incredible experience, really. Rather awe inspiring experience to come and see it all again. The camera doesn't really do justice to the vastness of the site and uh, it's only with the naked eye by being here that you can really take it all in. There appears to be the remains of a, a small bridge there. Plenty of sightseers, in fact it's been so busy during the summer that the roads have had to be closed and a specialist, special tourist route devised to keep the traffic moving at all. But now at the end of October, it's more peaceful and a uh, lot easier to see what's going on. I think now we'll have a walk down the slope, which of course should be below the waterline. This is incredible and get a better view of the bottom of the reservoir and the remains of the old village. Now I'm a bit lower down the slope. Camera adjusts it for a more panoramic view of the scene that we had a few seconds ago. The NRAF training plane keeps flying overhead it's uh, rather reminiscent of the dam busters in this particular location, if there was any water that is. But the, uh, the scenery and the type of location is so very similar to the dam busters practice ground and indeed the real thing in Germany. Now, just bring this little bridge a little closer. This is of very particular interest to me. I'm quite certain it is the bridge when I took a photograph of one of H. Murgatroyd's coaches, which I was driving at the time, to show that it was only just possible to get the vehicle across that narrow little bridge. Quite certain it's the same one. It was on a, a very, well, little more than a country track across the village from one main road to the other. I go a bit closer shortly and uh, try and take a photo from precisely the same angle as the little two and a quarter square black and white shot that I've got in my pocket now. Photography's changed a lot since then. There's a tiny waterfall in the distance there. Rather like a breach dam, that is, when you look at it now. And there, without a doubt, in front of it, what remains of West End Village Church. All the graves had to be removed to higher ground and reinterred near the Stone House Inn, obviously as a mark of respect, before 
building of the reservoir and flooding could commence. Well, this may sound like melodrama, but I promise everybody watching that it's not. In the few minutes since the last photos were taken, I have been foolish and very nearly lost my life by going too near the what appeared to be firm ground at the edge of the brook. In no time at all, up to the knees, Wellington's gone in rapidly uh, swallowing me up mud. I had to scream for help and eventually people came and I was only just got out, only just, a very very nasty experience. All clothing totally ruined, of course that doesn't matter and the Wellington lost in the mud forever, but at least we're still here. Just shows you how very easily you can be careless and come badly unstuck. Anyway, see if we can finish the film now before we go home and salvage what's left of the clothing. Uh, this is an old mill or farm of some kind right at the head of the West End village. Um, I'm not sure whether these were derelict before the flooding or whether the water's done this. Here's the brook. Very picturesque and quiet now. Leading round to the little dam that we mentioned before. Rather like a miniature of the, the Ruhr Valley dams in Germany. <laughs> Turned out to be very nearly as dramatic a few minutes ago too. I think I'd sooner have been in a Lancaster than gone through that little episode. We'll have a walk back now on safe ground towards the middle of the village. I was just thankful a few minutes ago to sit on this rock, safe rock and get some of the filthy, terrifying mud off my own surviving Wellington and uh, a lost one which a passerby kind of gave me to limp back to the car with on my left foot. What a day. And here are some more derelict buildings. It makes you think the quiet and solitude in this place has not altered over the centuries. Even today you could be a thousand miles away from civilization. Imagine living here, with no health service, no telephones, no roads, no buses or cars, my word. They paid for the uh, solitude in, in danger, that's for sure. And here's all that remains of the little chapel at West End. Thirty odd years of the water has certainly done its damage here. And the graffiti merchants, they're everywhere. Nothing sacred at all in this day and age, just look at that. A few more relics in the distance there of countryside industry of long, long ago, some kind of kiln in a... And there, another pile of stones, a building there that no doubt could tell tales of country life of long ago. And there, on that innocent looking, green, damp looking stuff, is where I very nearly came unstuck early on today. A narrow brush, which I don't want to repeat. And for those who say, if your number's on it and all that business, I've been at the solicitors this morning revising my will. My goodness, that makes you think. And there's another view of the little bridge. I have the snapshot of Murgatroyd's Bedford coach pose when I was driving it, 1961. It's been an entertaining afternoon, if not in the manner expected. Should be glad to get back home for once, I think.
Well, only myself to blame. Look at that. Well, I've never been so glad to see the old Sitchin. Headingly, here we come. Oh boy.